Today, I'm going to run you through the best ways to get free SEO backlinks with ChatGPT and the AI SEO link building secrets to increase your rankings. And this is how we're getting backlinks for this website and increasing its traffic in a very nice line there. And if you look at all of our case study websites, we're getting a ton of backlinks in. A lot of them are free. In fact, we probably get around, I would say, 100 free backlinks per month with the methods I'm about to show you, sometimes more. So I'll be deep diving into the secrets of AI powered SEO link building with ChatGPT. I've got some case studies, results, and all the strategies you need, whether you're starting out or already doing this yourself. And we'll cover some topics like link building strategies, outreach, harrow, the truth about irrelevant backlinks. Plus we'll answer some of the top FAQs about link building. And these strategies work whether you have a new website like this, or if you have an old site that you're reviving like this one. And even if you have a foreign website like this Spanish website, this video will help you. So let's go. So the first thing I want to cover is how do you get free backlinks with ChatGPT? And I would say there's three main ways that actually work right now. Number one is outreach, and I'll cover that in a second. Number two is Harrow. And number three is podcasts. And these are basically the top three ways to get backlinks with ChatGPT. So with outreach, basically what you do is you find prospects, and I'll show you how to do that later in this video. And then you would say to ChatGPT, write me an outreach funnel promoting this article. And you can see ChatGPT will actually create a whole email funnel for outreach that you can use to start getting backlinks to your website. And I'll cover some of the best ways to actually do the outreach later in this video too. The second method is helperreporter.com. Like I said, I'm not gonna go too deep into these methods, but basically to create your responses, you can get all the templates in my free course right here. And what you would do is make a copy of this spreadsheet right here. And then essentially using OpenAI and GPT Sheets, you can actually automate your higher responses. And all you do is you go to extensions, GPT sheets, set your API key, enable it for the spreadsheet template, and then you can paste in your response here and it will generate an automated response to the Harrow query. So this is how the whole workflow works. Basically, you create an account on Helper Reporter, you sign up as a source, then you would get the email roundups from journalists who are looking for you to pitch them with your response to their queries. So for example, people might be looking for experts to talk about depression after the breakup, right? After that, you plug in the email response like so into this spreadsheet. It creates a response for you once you've plugged in your API. You proofread it, you send about five or 10 of those a day, and then you start getting backlinks in like this DR81 right here. And then the final way to get free backlinks that I recommend with ChatGPT is you go to GPT-4, enable plugins, and you make sure you have WebPilot installed like this. And you would say, using WebPilot, give me a list of guest application forms for podcasts related to whatever your niche is. Give me marketing related podcasts along with their direct application forms. And then you can see what it's done is it's used WebPilot, Googled podcast guest form templates, and then it's linked you to a bunch of guest application forms like this. And then when you fill out these forms as well, you could use Harper AI, which is another chat GPT based tool that's completely free. And you can use that to apply for the application. So for example, you see the suggested topics in the application form here. Well, you could open up Harper AI and then you can say, right, give me two or three related topics for a 20 minute episode about blah, blah, blah to promote my agency. And it will give you the answers to the form. And if you need any ideas for filling out the form, you can just easily do that with chat GPT as well. And then for these podcasts, all you do is you show up, you get the podcast recorded. It's a numbers game. You might send five or 10 applications a day to get enough podcasts to build links to your website. But once you start getting the backlinks coming in, number one, you get in PR and you're promoting your business. But on top of that, you get in a backlink like this straight to your homepage. So it's an easy way to get free backlinks. Didn't pay a single penny for this. And you can easily find the application forms using ChatGPT and WebPilot like we've done here. And then you can easily fill out the application forms using Harper AI and just getting the creative stuff. The rest of it you can fill out yourself because, you know, job title company doesn't require much thinking. Now, one of the questions that I get asked a lot is how many free backlinks do I actually need to rank my website? Well, if you look at keyword that we're ranking for, for example, like buy high PR do follow backlinks, right? It's a decent amount of traffic potential. It's a money page where people are gonna buy stuff. And basically Ahrefs will give you the answer, right? So it will tell you how many backlinks you need to rank just in the top 10. So you can see here it recommends 10 backlinks to rank in the top 10 there. Now, obviously this comes down to quality, not quantity. 
And that's why it's always better to build backlinks there editorially added, like podcasts, Harrow, and Outreach. If you actually look at how many backlinks we needed to rank for this keyword, you can see that we've got 37, but actually we've only got six unique domains put into our website, but that's enough to rank number two for this keyword. So if you were trying to plan out your link building strategy and put a game plan together in terms of how many backlinks you need, just look through the top 10 ranking websites, look at how many referring domains have got, and then you can figure out, right, okay, well, if I don't build any backlinks, I'm probably going to end up around 10 or less. If I build around five backlinks, I'm probably going to be between nine and third, depending on the quality of those links. But if I really want to rank like top three, I need at least five, maybe six or seven backlinks to rank for that keyword. And you can easily get a feel for that looking at your competitors and seeing what they're doing to rank. The thing I would say is it's always less than you think, right? So for example, Ahrefs recommends you need 10, but actually a lot of the backlinks your competitors get getting won't be very high quality. So for example, if we look at this website and we see how many backlinks they've got, they've got 20. So why are they not outranking my page that's got six referring domains here? Because they've got eight referring domains. Well, actually, if you look at their backlink profile and see what they're doing to get backlinks, you can see they've got backlinks from pages like this, which are kind of like just spammy auto-generated websites. And it's not necessarily that they're building links from spammy websites like this. It's just the fact that some of these get auto-generated. So the figures often get skewed in terms of how many backlinks you need to rank. And that's why it's always less than you think, as long as you focus on quality. And what is quality? Well, it's websites where the backlinks have been built manually and editorially, not auto-generated like this. How do you get manual editorial links? Harrow, Outreach, and Podcasts. Simple as that. And you can do all three of those using ChatGPT, like I've shown you in this video already. So using this process, you can see it works. That's what worked for us and in terms of how we figured out how to rank for this keyword. And that's what we do for our clients too. Someone recently posted on my YouTube channel, what's better for a brand new website, right? So let's say you're building out a brand new website, you haven't built links before, and they are wondering whether to build backlinks to the main domain or build backlinks to posts. Here's what I prefer personally. If I have complete control over it, I much prefer to build backlinks to individual posts. And why is that? Simply because then my backlink profile is more diverse in terms of the pages that I've linked to. On top of that, I can link internally from this page to the other pages I want to rank. And that's what's working for this website. And that way I'm ranking for more keywords because all of these pages that are targeting low competition keywords are getting a few backlinks each, maybe one, two, three backlinks each, which means that it's going to be easy to rank each of them because they're targeting keyword difficulty zero to 10 keywords. That way more content is going to rank. Whereas if you link directly to your homepage, really you're limiting yourself to the number of pages you can get backlinks to. So I wouldn't recommend that. And then when I'm getting all these backlinks from other websites and they go into my blog posts on Vogel Funderland, like so, and one page might get one backlink and then this page gets three backlinks, this one gets two, etc. Then I can link internally from these pages to multiple other pages related on my site that need a bit of a boost to rank as well. And that way the backlinks that we're getting over here funnel down to one of our posts and then we can funnel that link to say, okay, the power from that backlink to other pages on our website, right? And we power up a lot more pages, which means a higher return on investment for the backlinks that we build. Whereas if we only built links to our homepage like this, then we only reach a limited number of posts unless they have a lot of internal links as well. But basically by covering a larger number of pages to link to, as you can see over here on this website, there's quite a big variety of websites that we're linking out to. That means we can rank for more keywords. As you can see the number of keywords and the number of organic traffic is going up, which means we get better results like this for a brand new domain. And we're not limited to building only links to our homepage. The other thing I would say is when you're building backlinks to your website, the content on your homepage is not very interesting to a webmaster to link to, which is why we create blog posts like this. And this brings me on to the next question, which someone asked me, which is, is a blog post already published on your site that you want to have backlink to? And what we do is we create linkable assets like this page right here that attract a lot of backlinks, as you can see. And when we do outreach, this is the most popular page to link to on our website. So you can see if we search for my page about climate change, we've got 12 different backlinks to that page. Why is that so popular for link building from outreach? Simply because it's a more valuable post, as you can see. 
And we actually created all of this content using Perplexity AI. You can watch my old videos where I created that page live. And if you need a link, just let me know in the comments. But basically what Perplexity does is it fact checks and source checks everything in your content, which is really good for link building, especially link magnets, because everything is just well referenced and well resourced, which makes it much more appealing and attractive for other websites to link to when you're doing outreach. And that's why we've got so many backlinks to this page, as you can see. And then again, we can insert loads of internal links to the right pages we want to rank, powering them up. But with a combination of AI to create the content and automate most of the research, and then setting up outreach for this page, we can build links much easier to this site. And I will explain that in more detail in a second, actually. So one of the things I got asked was, what outreach software do I actually use for link building? So originally I used to use Lemlist and Mailshake back in the day, but it gets a bit expensive if you've got multiple websites you're building backlinks for. You can actually use Hunter for free. Using the free plan, you can actually send emails for free in their campaign section here. So if you sign up for a free account, you can start sending the emails. For me, because we have hundreds of clients at our agency, we actually use Pitchbox. And Pitchbox basically finds all the email addresses for you, filters it, DR, et cetera. But it's super expensive if you don't have an agency. So if you're looking for cheap and free options, Hunter is good. Sending the emails manually yourself is even better. It's time consuming, but you get a better response rate because the emails that you're sending are not going for a software. They're being sent one by one by you. And if you send emails manually yourself, this looks more natural on your email service provider. The other thing I would say is if you're sending out emails manually yourself, you can gradually warm up your inbox manually. I mean, if you look at this guide by Woodpecker, basically when you send emails manually and you gradually warm up your account and you send maybe five emails the first day, six the next day, and then you start sending maybe 10 the next week, et cetera. Well, AI algorithms basically tag you as human and give you a good reputation. And that means you're less likely to end up in the spam or the junk inbox when you send emails. It's still going to happen inevitably, but that's basically an easy way to improve your open rates. If you are going to automate it though, Hunter is good, GMAS is good, it'll work. Another question I got was, I have a Dutch health website and all the articles are written with AI, right? So it's written in Dutch. And they were asking, can I get English backlinks? And how do you do that with your German website? Well. The best way to get English backlinks to your website is to create content on your Dutch website or your German website using AI like this, like we did with Plexity. And then you can reach out to English websites and say, hey, I've got this piece of content. When they click on it, they're going to see it's English. They're not going to check out your whole website. And that way you can build links to it. And then what you can do is actually link internally to the pages you want to rank from that English page and link internally to other pages on your website you want to rank and for that what works quite well this is what a lot of our clients do with foreign websites they actually link internally using english anchor text that's relevant to their content that's in say spanish or german etc and that way you're leveraging all the potential of an english market which is much bigger for link building and therefore much easier to get backlinks but you're funneling that power to foreign content which is easier to rank but has less backlink prospects and that seems to work really well for us. And a couple of people asked me, like, how do you select which websites you want backlinks from? Because your competitors are not going to want to link to you. Well, here's the thing that I would say, right? Quite often competitors do link to each other. I mean, even if you look at, for example, like semrush.com, obviously everyone knows they do SEO software. They link out to ahrefs.com. And this link, for example, is not nofollowed. You can see the same here. There's a backlink going to ahrefs website from semrush. And they're direct competitors for SEO software, right? And the same if you look at my YouTube channel and the interviews I've done in the past, quite often I've featured competitors of mine in other videos, like Ryan Stewart, he does a coaching program as well in SEO. But on top of that, he has an SEO agency and he does a similar service for clients. Does that make me fearful to link to them? Absolutely not. I don't care. And I think it's a bit of a limiting belief that your competitors or similar websites in your industry won't link to you. If you look at this guide on reciprocal links, which Ahrefs did a case study, 73% of websites actually link to each other in the same industry. So I think it's very, very common. And you might think, oh, my competitors doesn't want to link to me. But I think if you're helping each other, you know, that could be a reciprocal link. It could be a partnership, could be a collab deal. You know, you've got affiliates who promote competing websites all the time. It's never been a big deal for us. And because you're doing outreach at scale, 
and you know you're playing the numbers game it's never really an issue never stops me from getting backlinks i definitely wouldn't recommend forum links for me personally that's never worked my work for some people is like a tier two link where you actually build forum links to the website you're getting the backlink from to power up that website but i've never really tried or tested that myself so it's not something i specialize in and then to find the actual websites you want a backlink from say for example we're trying to find prospects to link to our guide about powerful backlinks. Well, what you can do is you can make sure the search settings on Google are set to 100, not 10. Type in your keyword that you're trying to rank for and that you want link building prospects for. You get a bunch of websites like this that have all written or mentioned powerful backlinks or whatever keyword you're trying to rank for. You know, you can replace that with can buffaloes eat peanut butter or whatever you're trying to rank for. And then what you can do is you can take this list of prospects. Here's a really easy way to do it with ChatGPT to get a ton of prospects for link building. You can press Command and A if you're on a Mac, copy that, paste it into ChatGPT like so. And you're literally just taking the whole results from Google like so. And you would say extract the domains relevant to whatever keyword you're trying to rank for from this page. And what ChatGPT will do is just give you all the domains so that you can reach out to relevant to the keyword you're trying to rank for. So you can see, for example, SEMrush, Mars. I would ignore any massive brands. So for example, is Neil Patel going to read my outreach email and then say, all right, mate, let's link to you. Probably not, right? The same with entrepreneurs. So just filter out the relevant websites that are smaller and more likely to link to you. You might want to repeat that process five or 10 times to get hundreds of link building prospects because like I always say, it's a numbers game for outreach. And then you can easily scrape loads of prospects, filter out the irrelevant ones, filter out the names that are just too big to build a backlink from. And that way you can get tons of link building prospects at scale. I use Pitchbox to avoid all of this because it saves me a lot of time, but it is expensive. So this is a free way to do it using ChatGPT4. Someone else was saying like for Harrow, most of the journalists need a specialist like a doctor, nurse, engineer, etc., for every question. And how do you scale it? Well, the first thing I would say is that for Harrow and helpforreporter.com when you're trying to get backlinks, it's scalable enough to get, I would say, two backlinks a week. I mean, if you look, for example, my backlink profile just for my agency website, juliangoldie.com, you can see most of these backlinks from Harrow, like you see here, they're all pointed to my homepage. And we literally got hundreds of backlinks doing this. I mean, you can see 315 backlinks. If we actually scroll down, we don't even do Harrow outreach anymore, and we still get tons of backlinks coming in, like you can see here, 4th of August, 3rd of August, etc. 3rd of August, we stopped because it's not that scalable and our reach is a lot more scalable to get backlinks. But basically the best way to do this is to avoid the healthcare section, unless you are a doctor, and then just scroll down to business and finance, right? Because if you're running a website, typically you know a decent amount about building a team, improving your marketing, business topics you can comment on. You don't need a PhD to do that. And literally every single day, there's tons of business and finance related queries that you could reply to. Now I would recommend that you send five to 10 responses every single day. And if you do that consistently for 30 or 60 days, you end up with hunks like we got here. Final question that I got asked was, if I create backlinks for my YouTube videos, will it block my channel or will it help my rankings? If I look at the growth of my YouTube channel and how well it's done, I, know, I wouldn't say link building has had any sort of impact on that. We used to get a lot of embeds where we'd reach out to other websites and ask them to embed our videos. It doesn't really have any impact on your views, I would say personally. Didn't help my rankings, etc. So for YouTube SEO, I wouldn't recommend building backlinks to your videos. Instead, if you want to get more views on your videos, just focus on click-through rate and watch time. That's basically it. The more we improve our retention rates on the watch time, the more views we get on YouTube. So thanks so much for watching. You've basically learned all the AI-powered SEO link building strategies that we use in with ChatGPT, Perplexity, Harp AI, et cetera. All of those tools are completely free to use and you can build a ton of backlinks like I've shown you. Now, if you want a free SEO strategy session where you'll learn how to get more backlinks, how to grow your SEO traffic, how to find the right keywords for your website, feel free to book in a strategy session. I'll leave a link in the comments. I'll also leave a link with a discount code to order in backlinks directly on our website. You can just choose how many backlinks you want plus the DR. And if you have any questions on how many backlinks you need, just let me know too. So make sure you subscribe. And if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.